Hello, I'm Professor Carol Wallace and I'm a trustee of the Royal Society for Public Health. I'm doing a series of video interviews about food safety culture with some of the key experts in food safety. And today I'm absolutely delighted that I've been joined by Professor Lisa Ackerley, who's well known to the members of the Royal Society as well as to the um, wider public for her work in food safety. So hello Lisa and thank you very much for joining me today. You're most welcome. Okay. What I'd like to do is just to start the conversation, um, if you could perhaps tell us what food safety culture means to you. For me, food safety culture means everybody in the business embracing food safety, so much so that it's almost second nature to them and they don't even think about it as food safety. It's part of the way of life, it's the part of the way that they naturally do things in the business. Okay, that's great. So if you were to go into a typical hospitality operation, so what would food safety culture actually look like, do you think? Well, it's all to do with people. So first of all, what it would look like is that everybody in, in the kitchen was doing something safely. So for example, they would be cooling food safely. Um, they would be throwing food away if it wasn't right. Um, they would be checking temperatures. They would be reheating things properly. They'd be cooking to the right temperature. Right. It's not just simply ticking a box and saying, yes, we've done it all right today. It's actually sometimes saying, we've found something wrong and we've corrected it and we've written it down to say that there's something wrong mm. um, and the food is safe as a result of that. But higher up the chain in the food industry, what's really important is for the business to understand and really recognise food safety as the number one priority before profit. So there's a culture there that will allow people to waste food if it is unsafe. Right. Yeah. Um, there's also a culture there that will allow people to develop menus safely with assistance from others to ensure that whatever the marketeers have dreamed up as a fantastic product is actually a safe product mm. for the person, uh, for the guest. Yes, I mean that's, that's a really interesting point um, because of course you can't make safe a fundamentally unsafe product concept. No, that's right. Yeah. And what I like to see in a business is that the people who are helping with the food safety are not boxed off in a corner as the mm. hygiene police, uh, but they're actually embraced as part of the, the menu development team. Mm. So what sorts of measures can you use to tell if you actually have a positive food safety culture in, in a business? Well, I think what you do is obviously look at the food safety management system and see if it does embrace all parts of the business properly. That's mm. the first thing anyone would do in an audit anyway, to yes. see if everything had been covered. And then to see if it's realistic. Are the, are the, um, are the measures actually being put into place in practice? Um, are they actually, is it possible to cool food down from that temperature to that temperature within that particular space of time? Um, so can, can people actually do what they need to do for it to be safe? And also in terms of training, how much um, training, not just at the, uh, at the food handler stage, but also other people who have a responsibility towards the final product. So mm. for example, the menu development people, they really need to have at least level three, I'd say, because they need to understand the result of their, of, of their creation. How, yeah. how, uh, how are they going to do it safely? And people right at the top also need to understand food safety and have some training as well. Mm -hmm. So do you think there's a role for auditors and inspectors in assessing food safety culture in a business? And, and if so, how, how would you go about that, do you think? I think it's really critical for mm. everyone to get involved. So auditors and inspectors are important as well. And they can look to see whether people actually understand food safety. They're not just paying lip serve to, service to it. Mm. Also, that they're checking the checkers. So it's almost a forensic audit that I'm encouraging these days where people yeah. will check for example in a large business they may say well okay the people at the bottom they've ticked a box the next person along has ticked a box the person above them has ticked a box all saying it's okay how do I find out whether that's really the case well I've got to go and talk to people ask them questions and see if they understand what they've ticked the box mm. for um, so it's more it's really getting away from that box ticking it's, uh, it's, it's looking to see whether they have put in corrective actions where things have gone wrong. So it's a much more detailed assessment, if you like, than, than perhaps we might have done a few years ago in an Absolutely. inspection. Yes, that's right. And um, what I'm finding quite interesting is some businesses are actually trying to instill those inspection habits in the people within the business, so not uh -huh. just relying on the external consultants, but I've recently been involved in some training where we've actually been building the confidence of the managers so that they can go in and look and see and observe and check 
to make sure um, that the culture is, is actually threading its way through the business. Mm. Fantastic. Um, so do you think food safety culture is something that really works only within businesses or do you think it can actually be shared up and down the supply chain as well? I think it's absolutely essential that it goes up and down the supply chain. For example, um, we want to make sure that businesses are buying confidently from, uh, from a supplier. Um, they want to make sure that the supplier is giving them the goods to, at the safest level possible. Now, one of the things that's important here is that relationship that's built up between the, uh, the purchaser and the supplier. If someone's just simply trying to get the best price, they may not necessarily get the best mm. value and they may not get safe food. And we've seen this with the adulteration issues. Yeah. So I think it's really important for businesses to realise that if they get something that's too good to be true in terms of price, then it probably mm. has something mm. wrong with it. It's from a market that you don't want to, to go into or it may have adulteration as we're finding more and more. Um, and, and, and I think from the consumer's point of view as well, I think it's driving that um, wish from the consumers to have safe, good, wholesome food. Yeah. Uh, so it's quality, not quantity. It's, you know, the eat all you like buffets mm. are attracting rubbish food and yes. people need to understand that you do get what you pay for. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in your experience then, what are the most important things in, to get right in, in product safety in, to protect the public in hospitality or operations? Maybe the top three, <laughs> if you like, because I'm sure there are many. Well, I think it's, it's so important to get the menu right. Yeah. Um, I think uh, where people have two large menus for their organisation, where they have, uh, their facilities aren't big enough to provide such a wide range of foods, they're going to struggle. Mm. If they've got a menu that's impossible to get right safely and they are forced by the business to, to practice and, uh, unsafe procedures yeah. um, just to get the menu on the table, then that's going to really cause a, a potential failure. Yeah. And of course, training is so important and it's got to be married up with um, the food safety management system and build culture into that as well mm -hmm. so that everybody gets the same message in the training and it's, it's really the, um, very much dependent on the job that they're doing, what, uh, what practices they learn yeah. about, but the message is we do it this way, we don't go off piece, we, uh, we absolutely get it right and mm. we get it safe every time. Okay, fabulous. Okay, I want to change tack just slightly. You, you already mentioned the consumer in, in one of your answers um, and I'm just interested in your views on whether the consumer plays a role in food safety culture. I think the consumer's got a, a role that is emerging at the moment, um, in particular in food safety culture, um, because of course we've got the food hygiene ratings, uh, the scores of on course, the doors, yes, which yeah. are, are, um, are actually making people think twice about, do I want to go to a business that has only achieved a three? Mm. They're looking for a four or a five. That's actually helping to push businesses to improve mm. because it's a very public thing. It may not be a legal requirement in England yet to put it on the yeah. door, but of course it's on websites and it's very easy for the public now to access that information. Mm. And also there's a, there's a big age of Twitter and other social media. Yes. Um, for example, um, I'm a follower of a website which calls, um, calls itself at, at uh, I want uh, food on a plate. Right. Yeah. So um, they actually are advocating, let's get rid of all these horrible chopping boards that people are being served food on that are cracked oh, and, yes, uh, yeah. and in, you know full of someone else's <laughs> dinner on them and everything yes. um, so they're saying we just want it on a plate can we just mm. have a clean plate and I think that's really interesting that someone has actually taken the trouble to set up a, a Twitter site just for that mm. um, so it's showing us really that there is a, a move towards people wanting safe mm. food mm. Um, and for people wanting food that looks clean and, and healthy uh, and so on so yes and to have that engagement with the businesses yeah, as well. yeah yeah and I think I think it's going to grow mm. so just to finish off then um, when when people are traveling overseas what sorts of things do you think they should be looking for um, to be confident that food safety culture and practices are actually working um, in the places they visit. Well, I don't want to put people off travelling, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the sorts of things to look out for are, are quite sort of straightforward. Yes. Really. I mean, obviously, you don't want to see any pests around in the mm. in the food area or in the toilet area, like cockroaches, mice, mm. and rats. You don't want to see um, hot food that's lukewarm. You don't want to see cold food that's lukewarm. Um, so it should, your hot food should be steaming hot. Mm. Um, I would also say that in all my travels when I've tested ice, I have not come across ice that is satisfactory mm. so far. So I would say, um, you know, don't touch the ice if you can help it. 
Um, if you're having water, always have bottled water that's sealed. And if mm. in doubt about that, have fizzy water because that's really difficult to cheat. Mm. Um, and, um, and, and really look around you, just get a feel. You can smell, use your senses. Yeah. You know, sometimes we forget to use our senses. I can walk into a place and smell that it's bad, mm. um, but then I'm an environmental health practitioner, yes. so I'm yeah. trained. But I think if you can smell dirt and grease and grime and, um, and you think the staff don't look very clean and their hands don't look very clean, um, it gives you a warning sign. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Thanks very much, Lisa. That's been really interesting. And uh, that, I'm sure that'll be very useful for people watching about food safety, culture and hospitality. Great, thank okay. you. Thank you. Thanks.